We have a panel of uh, individuals that will be presenting next. We have uh, Mr. Sean Lane, representative of Chief Power LLC. Mr. Vince Grazzini, director of environmental affairs, Olympus Power LLC. Mr. Paul Cameron, business manager, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers 459. Mr. Sean Steffi, executive board trustee, business agent, Boilermakers Local 154. Mr. Donald Arena, president of the South Central Pennsylvania Building Trades Council. And uh, thank you, sir, for bringing your chair back up. We had chairs there and they got uh, moved around, so thanks for uh, taking that initiative. We appreciate it. I was just going to direct somebody to do that for you. Appreciate it. Sir, before we get started, I'd just like to the majority and minority here to close my sources and all my information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Present. So whoever would like to start, uh, we've got the... Vince. I'll, I'll start. Uh, I'm Vince Persini. I'm the Director of Environmental Affairs for Olympus Power. I'd like to thank the Chairman and the uh, committee for allowing me to provide testimony today. There, uh, there is a slide deck, a blue slide deck, and you can follow along with my presentation today, my testimony, uh, as I process it. So if we go past the uh, cover page, Succinctly, REGI is a program that imposes artificial costs upon carbon dioxide emissions from electric generating units to price certain generation out of the wholesale markets. The next slide. While there are a number of other cap and trade programs, REGI is very different than those programs. A big difference is that the vast majority of affected sources are required to buy allowances in an auction. And unlike sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, the pollutants typically regulated by cap and trade programs, there aren't commercially available technologies to capture and store or otherwise manage carbon dioxide. The significant control of carbon dioxide can only be achieved by fuel switching, reduced utilization, or retirement. REGI is designed to increase the price of electricity from the affected units while the other cap and trade programs were designed to control the cost of the emissions reductions and the price of electricity. Next slide. Coal fired and certain fuel switched and older natural gas fired generation will be artificially challenged to remain economically viable in the PJM market. In the case of the coal fired plants, they will be retired as quickly as PJM provides approval. Next slide. Most Regi states and Pennsylvania's generators have reduced carbon dioxide emissions. Without participation in REGI, Pennsylvania's carbon dioxide emissions have been reduced by 33.2% from 2005 emissions, while at the same time maintaining its position as the number one exporter of electricity in the nation. That 33.2% reduction surpasses the target set by Governor Wolf, the Paris Accord, and even the vacated clean power plan well ahead of their respective schedules. We know how these carbon dioxide reduction, next slide, we know how these carbon dioxide reductions have occurred in Pennsylvania. The reductions are due to the retirement of coal and coal refuse fire generation and replacement by natural gas fire generation. Next slide. We also know that most of the Reggie states now import more electric power on a percentage basis than they did prior to participation in REGI. And those REGI participating states that aren't importing more electricity in 2018 have carbon dioxide emissions that have either increased above 2005 levels or they've had a reduction that is far less on a percentage basis than the reduction achieved in Pennsylvania without Pennsylvania participation in REGI. Next slide. Pennsylvania isn't an island in PJM. Consequently, we really don't know if Pennsylvania's participation in REGI will result in any regional carbon dioxide reductions. That's because the lost Pennsylvania generation will be replaced by generation in other PJM states not participating in REGI, 
and those generating plants could be coal or coal refuse fired or natural gas fired. We also know that the Pennsylvania, next slide, we also know that the Pennsylvania lost generation won't be replaced by renewables. Using land-based wind turbines for analysis purposes, because it's the most cost-effective renewable electric generation, it would take about 3,300 electric uh, wind turbines to replace the generation lost due to Reggie participation. To put that number into context, there are currently about 600 to 700 existing turbines in Pennsylvania. The failure of REGI to achieve mass installation of renewable electric generation is demonstrated by the continuing legislative efforts by the REGI states to force more renewable generating sources. REGI simply doesn't provide that outcome. Slide 11, if the lost Pennsylvania generation is replaced entirely by natural gas-fired generation, the maximum tonnage of carbon dioxide reduction that would occur would be about 19.8 million tons. That represents 1% of the annual carbon dioxide emitted by the electric generators in the United States. For perspective, slide 12, for perspective, coal and coal refuse fired electric generation in the United States together represent only 12.5% of the global coal fired electric generating facilities. If all of the Pennsylvania coal-fired generation lost due to participation in REGI would be replaced entirely by natural gas-fired generation located in Pennsylvania, and all of the existing Pennsylvania natural gas-fired generation were to operate at the same level as occurred in 2018, then the maximum amount of annual REGI tax revenue for Pennsylvania would be $267 million. However, remember Reggie states generate less electricity, which means a more realistic projection for Pennsylvania Reggie tax revenue is about 175 to $200 million annually. While there have been some reductions in the average price of electricity in the Reggie states, there are mostly increases to the residential prices of electricity. Delaware and Maryland are the only REGI participating states with reductions in the residential price of electricity as well as the average price of electricity, and both are in the PJM territory, and both have increased the amount of electricity they import, primarily from Pennsylvania. So skip a slide if you're going along. I had one accidentally in there. So we go to slide 15. So we know that Pennsylvania joining REGI will force the early retirement of the coal-fired electric generating units in Pennsylvania. We know that it won't cause a shift to renewable electric generation in Pennsylvania. We know it will reduce the amount of electricity generated and exported by Pennsylvania generators. We know that it will result in lost Pennsylvania coal-fired electric generation being replaced by electric generation from other non-REGI PJM states. We know that the lost Pennsylvania coal-fired generation be, will be replaced by natural gas or other coal or coal refuse units either inside or outside of Pennsylvania. We know that this will result in companies moving the development of new natural gas-fired generating units to other non-REGI PJM states. And joining REGI will not result in CO2 emissions reductions that will affect local, regional, or global climate. And Reggie will only generate about 175 to $200 million a year. Thank you for allowing me to provide this testimony today. Thank you, sir. We have Mr. Lane next, I believe. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Sean Lane. I'm speaking here this morning on behalf of Chief Power, uh, and we're one of the investors in the Keystone and Conema projects. Uh, wh why are we here? Uh, I do have slides, by the way, the, the green slides, if you wanted to follow along. Uh, why are we here? I is it due to a legislative mandate, a carbon imperative, or just chasing tax dollars? Uh, I would posit that none of these are sufficient reasons for Pennsylvania to adopt REGI. The initiative released by ACTAC to the DEP is regulatory in nature, but without any really firm legislative authority. As to carbon emissions, 
Pennsylvania has already outperformed all of the carbon metrics set for Pennsylvania generation by President Obama's Clean Power Plan, by the Paris Accords, and even Governor Wolf's own previously established carbon goals. In fact, there is good reason, as Mr. Bersini noted, to believe that carbon emissions and other pollutants could even increase in the region if Pennsylvania adopts REGI because our electricity generation capacity will simply be replaced within PJM by uh, states such as Ohio and West Virginia. Finally, we believe that REGI supporters' tax revenue estimates fail to embrace the inevitable plant closures and are therefore overvaluing the significance of REGI revenue and at the same time undervaluing or ignoring the severe economic harm caused by these closures. Reggie's an unrecoverable tax on coal and natural gas fired generation in Pennsylvania. All Pennsylvania generators will, be, generators will become less competitive within PJM as compared to neighboring non Reggie PJM state generators, such as those located in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, and West Virginia. Reggie will cause the immediate or near immediate retirement of all of the coal fired power plants in Pennsylvania. If you are familiar with the markets today, it's a near certainty that this will occur. And the loss of the related economic benefits, the high paying jobs, the tax revenue, and the supporting industries anchored in those communities. One way to look at it is that Reggie is simply a nuclear tipped economic cruise missile aimed at the coal fired power plants and at the citizens located in Allegheny, Armstrong, Cambria, and Indiana counties. These Pennsylvania counties represent ground zero for Reggie. In light of Reggie's impact upon the plants and upon the vulnerable communities where they are located, certain coal-fired facilities, which have already invested billions of dollars to remain in compliance with environmental rules and regulations and remain operational, Cheswick, Homer City, Keystone Economa, engaged the economic consulting firm eConsult to work with us and examine the contributions made by these plants and what will be lost if they are forced to shutter prematurely. Here's what we found. Locally, these four facilities on an annual basis generate 33.2 million megawatt hours of electricity, just over a billion in operating expenditures a year, 622 people are employed directly by these facilities, and we pay over $91 million in employee compensation, including benefits on an annual basis. Statewide, these facilities annually support $2.87 billion in total economic impact within Pennsylvania, 8,170 total jobs, and 539 million in employee compensation. In my slides, you can also see the breakdown by Pennsylvania County and the, the counties that I noted uh, previously. These same plants are very important to local corporate citizens and among the largest state and, and local taxpayers in those communities. They contribute 38 million annually in income, sales, business, environmental, municipal utility, property, taxes, and fees. There's no doubt that Reggie will diminish Pennsylvania's premier national role as an exporter of electricity. Reggie's program history, and all the other Reggie states so far, proves that participants will generate less electricity and import more out of state or out of region power. This is referred to as leakage, this concept. Reggie provides a competitive advantage to new and existing non-Pennsylvania generation resources located in PJM states where Reggie is not adopted. Again, West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky benefit if Pennsylvania adopts Reggie. Net exports of Pennsylvania electricity will be reduced and we all remember from basic economics, the principle of comparative advantage will prevail. New projects will simply move right across the border from Pennsylvania to more investment friendly non Reggie states and have an advantage over all existing Pennsylvania generation. In lieu of Pennsylvania exporting electricity, Reggie will export new investment, new construction jobs, and new operations jobs from Pennsylvania to those states. Again, this is leakage. Reggie will also diminish Pennsylvania's electric energy resilience by causing the immediate or near immediate shutdown of all coal fired generation in Pennsylvania. We will cease to have this robust resource available to us during the next polar vortex or during other extreme demands for electricity, whether technical or weather related. And you can see in one of the slides how coal has responded during those times of extreme uh, demand. Reggie re represents value destruction and sends an investment risk message to the capital markets, the energy capital markets. Two examples. In the summer of 2019, the uncertainty of Reggie, Reggie rumors were spreading in Pennsylvania, 
and its potentially adverse financial impact upon solid fuel plants caused lenders to withdraw from certain lending syndicates supporting coal-fired facilities. In the fall of 2019, the proposed acquisition of a coal refuse facility was withdrawn following the announcement of Reggie. That plant will close at the end of March. Simply stated, the markets are watching us, and even if unspoken, the markets will vote with their next investment dollar. The economic principle of comparative advantage will prevail, lost Pennsylvania generation will be replaced by new investment in PJM, but outside of Pennsylvania, places like Ohio, West Virginia, without the added Reggie tax. So finally, how do we move forward together? There are certainly many people of good faith on both sides of this discussion. Yet we need to ensure that transparency governs Pennsylvania's approach to Reggie and its implications for the Commonwealth. The voice of all of the stakeholders, including those most directly and adversely affected, must be heard. We ask that you commit your offices to supporting the resilience and the competitiveness of Pennsylvania's diversified energy portfolio and Pennsylvania's proud position as the top energy exporting state in the nation. We ask that you embrace the vital direct economic contribution from coal-fired facilities to the communities that they serve. As a matter of fairness and legitimate legal authority, we believe that Pennsylvania must also adopt prior legislative authorization before committing the Commonwealth to Reggie, or for that matter, to any cap and trade program. Ultimately, if Pennsylvania proceeds down this path, we can certainly agree not to implement Reggie or any cap and trade program in Pennsylvania without all the PJM border states first implementing Reggie as well. This would at least be a means of mitigating the damage caused by leakage. Without these sorts of protections, we are unilaterally making a decision to destroy investing in existing investment and existing jobs in Pennsylvania, and we're purchasing, at best, a diminished future for Pennsylvania's energy markets. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, Cameron, we have next. You might want to pull the microphone, sir, over in front of you there so we can, cameras are rolling. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Chairman Metcalf and Vitale, representatives and members of the committee. My name is Paul Cameron. I'm the business manager of IBEW Local 459 in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And I'm here on behalf of the 1,700 members of Local 459. Uh, Local 459 has been representing the union members who perform operation and maintenance work in the utility industry of Western Pennsylvania since 1934. Our members perform the work of building and maintaining electric transmission lines and distribution systems. We operate and maintain hydro, natural gas, coal refuse generating stations, as well as the three largest coal electric generating stations in the state. That's why I'm here today, to talk about the Homer City Generating Station, Connemaw Generating Station, Seward Generating Station, Shawville Generating Station, and the Keystone Generating Station, where I hold the job classification of a certified welder, and I've been employed there for 30 years. The generating stations I've mentioned have evolved immensely since their initial construction. They are constantly changing by adding new equipment, updating operating procedures and finding better ways to run a cleaner, more efficient and safe plant. Proof of this is the 40% drop in per capita emissions from 2005 to 2017 of our Pennsylvania power plants. This is the same reduction of the Reggie states, which makes me wonder if the Reggie program actually is responsible for reduced emissions or was it just the evolution of the industry? When we talk about preserving or protecting Pennsylvania's natural resources, we must be mindful of the most important resource that Pennsylvania has, its workforce. The wage and benefit packages provided to the workers that are negotiated between the unions and the companies that operate the plants set a standard in the area for wages, benefits, pensions, and retirement savings plans while providing safe working conditions and job security. These generating stations have been the core for a steady economy for our area for generations. Residing in Indiana County, I feel very lucky to have had the opportunity to raise and provide for my family in a community that has been fortunate not to have experienced the adverse effects of a community in decline. I credit that to the power generating industry that has provided multiple generations with family sustaining jobs. These jobs support some of the best public school districts in Pennsylvania 
where the communities are moving forward. Being a part of these communities have been a, have, and, and having a secure job is what the middle class workforce dreams of. Those of us in the coal electric generating industry are proof that it does exist. Pennsylvania workers cannot afford to lose these family sustaining jobs, which is what happens when a state joins Reggie. Please keep in mind that it is always the working people who have kept the economy going. Preserving these family sustaining jobs for the working people of Pennsylvania is my number one priority and I ask that you please make it yours. In closing, I would like to mention, when the cost of power generator increases, consumers pay more. If Pennsylvania loses its status as a top exporter of electric power, the workforce and communities will suffer most. I request that all House members back Local 459 and our 1,700 members who feel that Reggie presents a dangerous threat to our livelihoods, our communities, and our economic security. We would ask that you support House Bill 2025, and we ask that you oppose initiatives that would tax Pennsylvania's electric generation. And I respectfully ask Governor Wolf not to enter into the multi-state Reggie that will result in exporting jobs, and for the first time, Pennsylvania becoming an importer of electric power. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sean Steffi, Executive Board Trustee, Business Agent with Boilermakers Local 154. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning. My name is Sean Steffi, and I am the Business Agent and Executive Board Trustee for Boilermakers Local 154 in Pittsburgh. I also serve as the Recording Secretary of the South Central Building Trades and today I am here along with my business manager, John Hughes, on behalf of almost 2,000 family, 2,000 members and their families to discuss our concerns about the energy situation in Pennsylvania. Our local covers Western Pennsylvania, parts of Ohio and West Virginia, while local 13 in Philadelphia serves the east side of the state. Boilermakers are skilled tra tradesmen who are proficient in all aspects of heavy construction industry. We play a large role in the building and maintenance of coal and gas-fired power plants, steel mills, paper mills, refineries, and chemical plants. Today I am here to show you the severe impact that the, la the loss of coal-generated electricity will have in Pennsylvania due to Reggie. NACE power contractors and Hayes Mechanical, who are responsible for the bulk of the Boilermaker work at Homer City, Keystone, Connemaw, and Seward, just outside of Pittsburgh. From 2017 through 2019, Nays and Hayes Mechanical collectively reported 688,674.65 man hours at a $31 million gross wage. That's conservative numbers. These numbers do <coughs> These numbers do not account for the thousand of other man hours reported from other signatory contractors within our jurisdiction, which is why I affirm these numbers are conservative. Interfab Power and Industry and Company, the main contractor at the now decommissioned Bruce Mansfield Power Station in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, recorded 278,900 man hours from 2017 to 2019 and gross wages of $14.5 million to the Boilermakers. Just across the border at the Samus plant in Columbia County, Ohio, Interfab reported 238,275 man hours from 2017 through 2019 and 14 million gross wages, not to mention that they have already projected over 200,000 man hours at Samus now for 2020, which is a direct reflection of the shutdown of the Bruce Mansfield plant in Pennsylvania. In the Northeast region of the United States, several states have already signed on to the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, as we know. This affects 11 Boilermaker locals whose members reside in these states. To put things into perspective, 
In 2017 through, th through, through 2019, these states reported 6 million man hours total. My local, combined with Local 13 in Philadelphia, reported 8 million man hours total for the entire state of Pennsylvania. As you can see, our 11 sister locals who reside in these Reggie states are struggling, and I do not wish the same for Pennsylvania. Projected to start in 2022 across the border from Greene County, Pennsylvania and West Virginia is Longview Power Clean Energy Center. Longview plans to build a 1,200 megawatt gas-fired combined cycle power plant and a 70 megawatt solar farm at a total cost of $1.1 billion. Longview CEO Jeff Kafer says this facility will be a global model for clean fossil and renewable energy development. Now here's a couple facts. They will run a 30 million 6.2 mile pipeline back into Greene County, Pennsylvania, tie into the Trans-Canadian uh, Columbian pipeline and use Marcellus Shell to power West Virginia's new gas plant, which will create millions in tax revenue and 5,000 construction jobs in West Virginia. The solar farm, which will primarily sit in Pennsylvania, will receive renewable energy tax credits from Pennsylvania because West Virginia has no such program, and this will create two to four full-time jobs. Senator Shelley Moore Capito, Senator Joe Manchin, and Governor Jim Justice of West Virginia said they will be an all-in energy state and truly put West Virginia on the map. Pennsylvania should be pursuing these hybrid power plants as a leader of electricity generation. And make no mistake, we will never have these opportunities if we join Reggie. A $5 billion ethane cracker plant has broken ground as we speak in Belmont County, Ohio. Reggie states would rather spend $950 million on a transmission line from Canada called the New England Clean Energy Connect and import hydroelectricity and receive tankers of natural gas from foreign countries but will not let a pipeline from Pennsylvania into their states to receive Marcellus Shell gas. Why would we want to follow the Reggie states when they have the highest electricity prices, the highest cost of living, terrible infrastructure, and all are importers of electricity when we are the leaders of, of exporting electricity? Why would we want to contribute to Reggie Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit business based in New York, which oversees all Reggie states, employs a high profile, highly educated staff who I would think would require hefty salaries, and Pennsylvania will be their largest contributor if we join. Pennsylvania is demonized for using coal, but 43 biomass plants are operating in all these ready states and provide 150% 150 more, 150 more CO2 per megawatt than coal. And they're considered renewable energy receiving tax credits. Biomass has become the number one renewable energy in six ready states. Let's consider Germany, a leader in renewable energy who are still unable to rely solely on, re on renewables alone to keep their grid stable. As we speak, they are currently bulldozing ancient forests, historical towns and churches to mine brown coal to stabilize their grid and economy, wasting billions on renewable en en efforts and still unable to meet their clean energy goals. Why do we continue to push for solar, an intermittent, unreliable source of energy, and as predicted by many, including Michael Schellenberger, a Green Book winner, and Time Magazine's Hero of the Environment, Michael states that solar panel disposal will explode with full force and wreck the environment. China's expert on solar waste calling it a ticking time bomb. Japan's environmental ministry cannot recycle 10,000 tons of solar panels and predicts 800,000 tons in 2020. Our own heavily subsidized solar manufacturers are facing recycling problems, many going bankrupt, leaving taxpayers the burden to clean up toxic sites, costing millions. 200-foot windmill blades that cannot be recycled are filling our landfills, just ask Wyoming. And as of February 3rd, 3rd Japan just announced 22 new coal-fired 
power plants to be built in Japan. Why are they not using renewables? Because coal works. Therefore, PA must be proactive and implement and subsidize carbon capture technology so we can use our abundant coal resources and control emissions. Let's produce fertilizer. Let's create high paying jobs. And I urge the House to vote yes on Bill 2025 and keep Pennsylvania a leader in exporting electricity. Thank you, members. Thank you, sir. Our uh, final member of this panel, Mr. Donald Arena, President of South Central PA Building Trades Council. Thank you, sir. Yes. Good morning, Chairman Metcalf, Chairman Vitale, and the members of the committee. My name is Donald Arena. I am the president of the South Central Building and Construction Trades Council. You might want to pull that microphone just a little closer, sir. Just oh, to... Sorry. Is it on? Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Our council consists of 22 affiliated building trades local unions serving seven counties in west central Pennsylvania, including Cambria and Indiana County. Our affiliated local unions provide manpower to every aspect of the construction, maintenance, repair, and service industries throughout the seven counties. Projects that you may see our members on are as small as local retail stores to large industrial manufacturing and power generation plants. One of our larger plants, larger projects recently completed in Cambria County is a 1,050 megawatt combined cycle natural gas facility. This facility provide our, provided our members with approximately 1.7 million man hours over a 30 month duration at approximately a billion dollars. And that's the project, total project cost. I've provided a fact sheet with a brief overview of this project. And I do want to mention that that project came in at two months early. Uh, it went commercial two months early than anticipated. We also provide manpower to contractors that serve Conema, service Conema, Homer City, and sewer generating station, as well as plants outside our territory. We have members at these plants year round. In addition, we do forced outages throughout the year, as well as seven to eight week outages in the spring and fall. As an example, in 2018, the, the unit one fall outage at Conema Station roughly was eight weeks long and was over 215,000 man hours. Our craft members' benefit, economic benefit was approximately $19 million. In 2019, the Unit 2 outage at Keystone Power Station was a similar duration with 259,000 man hours and an economic benefit of approximately $23 million. I wanted to provide this background information so you could understand the impact that Reggie will have on craft people and the reduction of man hours. In the last 10 years, we have seen numerous coal-fired power plants either convert to natural gas or retire, which reduced carbon emissions. Without Reggie in place, it is estimated that the remainder of the coal-fired plants will retire within the next five to 10 years, if not sooner. With Reggie in place, these plants will close almost immediately after it's implemented. We need to let these plants retire at their own pace. By doing this, we will have the opportunity to replace these plants with another form of energy instead of giving the opportunity to another state in the PJM operating market. We need to entice investors to build new facilities on these retired generation sites, not deter them. I would give the communities, this would give the communities a chance to recoup some of its tax revenue losses from the current plant closings. Just the mere fact that the governor has announced that he would like to become part of the Reggie program has already deterred investors from looking in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania uh, to build future plants. In Fayette County, there is a closed fossil fuel plant that retired in 2013, and it's called Hatfield Ferry. This plant is slated to have a new combined cycle gas-fired power plant built on its site. We understand that the investors were considering not building this plant because Reggie was a possibility in the Commonwealth. 
let's face facts. If I were an investor and I had billions of dollars to invest in energy, and I had a choice between investing in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as a Reggie state, or investing in Ohio or West Virginia that does not have an additional cap and trade mechanism in place, which one would I invest in? Why would developers build a gas-fired power plant in a state that would have an additional operating cost of $2.35 per megawatt hour? I think we need to look at the big picture. We are a part of the PJM operating market that consists of 13 states, so developers could build anywhere in the market and still provide power to the grid. The power generation business in our Commonwealth is already exceeding the CO2 benchmarks. Again, why, let these plants re why not let these plants retire to natural progression? This would give us an opportunity for investors to put power plants on those old fossil fuel sites, which in turn would give the community, the community that will be in a distressed status an opportunity to recoup some of its losses in tax revenue. As I mentioned before, a 1,050 megawatt combined cycle power plant provides workers with about 1.75 million man hours. Granted, we don't get the maintenance out of these plants like we do coal-fired power plants. And these plants operate with much less manpower. But at least the community would regain some of its tax revenue losses. My hometown's Johnstown, PA. Johnstown, PA was a thriving steelmaking town until the early 80s. During the years of the Cold War, Johnstown, PA was one of the targets because of the fact that it made so much steel. When the steel mills closed, the town was devastated. By 1992, the city of Johnstown became a distressed city under Act 47. By October of 2021, they will be out of their distress sat the status. That's 29 years, and at this point, they aren't 100% sure how it's gonna work out. The point I'm trying to make is that communities don't recoup as fast as you think from major industries moving out of the area. Now, in Johnstown's case, it was unavoidable, unavoidable based on economic conditions and a major flood in 1977. In this case, by implementing REGI, you are creating an economic hardship for these communities. With Reggie in place, once again, investors are less likely to come. In closing, I ask that all branches of state government look at all factors and all data before deciding into entering into the Reggie program. Thank you again for my opportunity to testify. Thank you very much, sir.